Hello friends, welcome to Expert Guidance. Today in this video, we'll be covering the topic 4.5 of your AQA GCSE Chemistry Paper 1, The Energy Changes. So to remind you, for your paper one, we need to do the topic of atomic structure, periodic table, structure and bonding, quantitative chemistry, chemical changes, energy changes. All the videos of these topics are there in this playlist. Today, today we are covering the last topic, which is the energy changes. Now, in energy changes, we'll be looking over exothermic reaction, endothermic reaction, reaction profile diagrams, bond energy calculation, fuel cells, and batteries. So let's begin. Now, on the basis of a reaction, the energy it releases or takes in, we classify the reactions into two categories, exothermic and endothermic. Now, these two reactions are based on the law that energy is neither created nor destroyed. It is transformed to one form to the another. Now, there are certain reactions which will take in heat and the certain reactions which will release heat to the surrounding. Now, exo means external. So, any reaction that releases heat external, so that releases the heat to the surroundings, are the exothermic reactions. And endothermic, endo means inside. So, any reaction that takes in heat from the surroundings are endothermic reactions. Now, naturally, if any reaction is releasing heat, it will make the temperature increase of the surrounding. So, the exothermic reactions are accompanied by increase in temperature of the surroundings as the heat is released. On the other hand, the endothermic reactions are accompanied by decrease in temperature of the surrounding as the heat is absorbed. Now, in exothermic reaction, as you're releasing heat to the surroundings, so naturally the product energy will come down. So, the product have lower energy than the reactants in an exothermic reaction and in an endothermic reaction, the products has a higher energy than that of the reactants. Now, example of an exothermic reaction, combustion and respiration. Example of an endothermic reaction, that is thermal decomposition and photosynthesis. Now, we can also define exothermic and endothermic in terms of bone breaking. Now, in terms of bone breaking, the exothermic reactions are releasing more heat. And whenever the heat is released, when the product is made. And whenever the heat is taken in, when the reactants are breaking down. So every reaction, in order to break the bonds, it takes in heat. And whenever it makes the bond, it will release heat. Now, in an exothermic reaction, as the heat released is more, it means that the product is giving more energy. Then it is used up in breaking the reactants. And the endothermic reaction, in terms of bond baking, the bonds of the reactants are taking in more heat to break the bonds rather than which is more than the energy released in making the products. I hope this concept is clear to you. If not, do not worry. After a couple of slides, we'll again go over this. Now, you know exothermic reaction releases heat to the surroundings. So as exothermic reactions are releasing heat to the surroundings, they are used in the self-heating cans and the hand warmers, whereas the endothermic reactions are used in ice pack for the sports injury. Okay, so I hope this difference is clear to you. Now, let us look at the reaction profile diagram. It can come in the exam to draw them or to label the reaction profile diagram. Now, for both of these reactions, you will be making the axes. The y-axis will be labeled as energy. The x-axis as progressive reaction. You will do both sides. You will make a line of the energy of the reactants on both sides. On the exothermic, the product has lower energy. So, place product as a lower energy level. Then the reactants. In endothermic, the product has higher energy than the reactants. Now, join the reactants and products with the bump at the top. Same to the other side. This bump, which is the energy of the reactant, still the highest point is the activation energy. You should remember it. This is the minimum energy that every reactant should have to start the reaction. And the difference in the energy of the reactants and product is the heat release or absorbed. In case of exothermic reaction, the difference in the energy of the reactants and product is the energy released to the surrounding. And in case of an endothermic reaction, this difference is the energy absorbed from the surrounding. Okay, so I hope this is clear to you. Now, let me again explain you the concept of bond making and breaking. In every reaction, there's a reactance which is converting into a product. The reactants are breaking the bonds and that is taking in heat. The products are making the bond and that is always releasing the heat. Now, in an endothermic reaction, which takes in heat, the breaking of the bonds takes in more heat than it is released in the products when the heat is made. 
in an exothermic reaction breaking of the bonds of the reaction takes in heat is less than the making of the bonds of the product that releases heat okay so this is how you can define the reactants and products in terms of bond breaking it has come up in the exam to write this definition in terms of bond making and bond breaking so you should explain this definition in that okay next is the bond energy calculation this is a higher tier question where you need to first display the bonds of the reactions and the products from the data booklet take the bond values add the bond values of the reactant side add the bond values of the product side take the difference of the two and that will give you the heat associated with the reaction so here we have aa bond and bb bond from the data booklet we are 221 and 325 that gives you 546 for the 2ab it's 2 times the ab bond so 2 times 220 uh, 2 times the ab bond which is 425 that gives 850 so the energy required to break the bonds of the reactants is 546 the energy released to make the products is 850 you take away the two that gives you minus 304. So 304 is the energy released to the surrounding. And in this case, the product is having the higher energy is releasing more energy than it is used up in the reactants. So therefore, it's an exothermic reaction. Okay, so I hope this bond energy calculation is clear to you. Now, what is cell and a battery? A cell is a device that converts a chemical energy into a uh, electrical energy. In a simple cell apparatus, you can see to the left side, we have two metals, zinc and copper. They both are dipped into the solution of the electrolyte, zinc sulfate and copper sulfate. The more reactive metal will sense the electron to the less reactive metal and this movement of electron will generate electricity as it constitutes the electric current. Okay, so this is how we uh, do the cells and the battery. Now, this is what you have in your syllabus, a fuel cell. A fuel cell is a device which again converts the uh, chemical energy into electrical energy, but that relies on the reaction of hydrogen and oxygen to form water. So this is a setup of a fuel cell. The hydrogen is pumped at the negative electrode and it provides the electron. Oxygen is supplied to the positive electrode which forms hydroxide ions. Now the equation is at the negative electrode, hydrogen and hydroxide combines to form water and electron. And at the positive electrode, oxygen takes up water and these electrons to form 4OH minus. So hydrogen is donating the electrons to the oxygen side. This movement of electron generates electricity and overall this reaction results in the formation of water. So hydrogen and oxygen forms water. So what is the good part of this reaction? No harmful gases are released. The only product formed is water which is not a harmful or a toxic product. No harmful gas or waste is produced. Waste product is only water, so no problem to the environment, and it do not need to be charging. On the other hand, there are still disadvantages of a fuel cell. Hydrogen is flammable. Production of hydrogen depends on non-renewable resources. Hydrogen gas being a gas is difficult to store and transport, and storing and transport of hydrogen involves energy, which comes from fossil fuel. Thereby, it does contribute to global warming. Okay, so I hope this topic is a short, sweet and simple topic. Let us just quickly look over the key terms that we saw in this uh, topic. What is an exothermic reaction? The reaction which gives out heat, example, respiration and combustion. Endothermic reaction are the reaction which takes in heat from the surrounding, example, photosynthesis or thermal decomposition. Reaction profile is a diagrammatic representation showing the relative energies of reactants and products in a reaction. Activation energy is the minimum energy required to start the reaction. Bond energy is the heat energy contained in a bond between two atoms. Chemical cell is a device that converts chemical energy into electrical energy. Fuel cell is a chemical cell that uses a reaction between hydrogen and oxygen to form water and energy and generate electricity. Batteries are the collections of cells. Okay, so I hope these key terms are clear to you. Now let's test yourself. In past this video, have a go over these questions and come back to check the answers. So you need to label this reaction profile and label it if it is an exothermic and an endothermic. You have to draw an energy profile diagram of an endothermic reaction, give two applications of exothermic and endothermic reaction, and state the advantages and disadvantages of a fuel cell. Pause the video, have a go at these answers.
Okay, so now let's look at the answer. To label it, you will be labeling the axes. This is energy. This is progress of reaction. This is the energy of the reactants. This is the energy of the products. The reactant gives a bump, and that's the activation energy. And this difference between the reactants and the products is the energy released to the surrounding. And in this reaction, the product has a lower energy than the reactant. Therefore, it's an exothermic reaction. This is an in, uh, energy profile diagram of an endothermic. So it's an energy progressive reaction. The products have the high energy level than the reactants, and then we have the activation energy pump. The application of an exothermic reaction is the self heating cans and hand warmers. For the endothermic, it's the ice pack and the self cooling cans. For the advantages of and disadvantages of the fuel cell, we have already discussed no waste product. Waste product is only water, does not read need charging. The side advantages, hydrogen is flammable. Production of hydrogen depends on non-renewable resources. Hydrogen being gas is difficult to store in transport. And storing and transport of hydrogen again involves a dependency on fossil fuel, which contributes to global warming. Okay, so I hope this topic is clear to you. Now, the next step is to check the specification. Make sure everything which is there in your specification should be crystal clear to you. And you need to do the exam questions on this topic, which is very, very important. You can get them on my website. Okay, so I hope you like this video. If you like this video, then please do like, comment, and share this video amongst your friends. Please spread this word around. Make sure that every person who needs this video gets the chance to see this video. And if there's any video which you want me to make before your exam, just leave a comment below and I'll try to make it. I'll try my level best to have that up uploaded before your exam. If you still have any doubts in any of this topic, then you can leave a comment below. We'll reply you quickly. Or you can come to our website. There we have set up a 24 seven chat support your exams where you can post any of your queries and get instant reply okay so do not forget to leave a comment below to tell me the topic on which you want me to make the next video till then happy revising